on CKUT 90.3 FM. Listen, man, different cooks here trying to push their thing up. It's not even your turn yet. Cami food, her super food. Super I better be, food. I better become super ultra after I eat cami food. Oh my gosh, it smells so Montreal, good. Montreal, my city, welcome back. The morning detour. This is a new year. I want to celebrate Black Excellence. So this Friday, Desta apparently has an incubator program where they're teaching. I thought it was kids, but I was wrong. <laughs> Talk about my email thread being wrong. But it's actually fully grown adults yes. that um, have a passion for cooking. I wanted to start their own businesses. Yeah. So it's part business, part cooking, all that. Yeah. So I guess, you know, uh, we're going to start with the first meat cooker or chef, as they like to be called, yeah. apparently. Look at this. A cook. Uh, uh, a, a, a cook. Yeah. She ain't bring no doubles, y'all. Yes. She ain't bring no, she ain't bring no doubles, y'all. She ain't bring no doubles, y'all. Listen. I'd like to introduce everybody around the city to Chelsea from Sunday lunch. Hello. A little bit misleading for those that are really West Indian. They know that most West Indian places are closed on Sunday. But maybe <laughs> Chelsea might change that. Chelsea, welcome well, to the show. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. And thank you for having us from Desta here as well. Um, to answer your question, it's called Sunday lunch. Yes, everything, every West Indian place is always closed on a Sunday. But right. if you're from the Caribbean, you know that Sunday lunch is the most important meal of the week. That's where everyone gets together. Yeah. Okay. That's where no matter who you're feuding with, you're showing up because you know the food's going to be good. <laughs> and you know you're going to have leftovers for mm. the rest of the week. So that's what the the name was birthed from right. that that meal being so important. So my family's from Trinidad. Well, I was just about to segue. Yeah. You took the words of my mom. One of our producers <laughs> on the show, Sabi, she is Trini. Yeah. Um, on the detour, anti Sokov over here. I, I, I think pelting the waist is too much work. It's too much sweat. <laughs> but after a good soca party, I think the most beautiful women come out to soca parties and pelt their waist. I think after soca party, you do need some good nourishment. Um, I'll give you guys the doubles. Yeah. I love me a double. Now the double, I feel yeah. like the double is like a is like a roti cheat. You know, I could take it to go. Yeah. I've heard you mention off here TNT Palace. Yeah. TNT Palace, in my opinion, has had the best double I've tasted. Yes. Until she got kind of rude with me during the <laughs> during the COVID. It was <laughs> open and I went in there and it wasn't open. I was kind of disappointed, so I haven't had a double there since. But I was hoping you would have brought a double this for this what? interview. What I love about TNT Palace, and mm. shout out to Sharon, um, she just does it. When she runs out, she runs out. She calls it a day, locks up shop, goes home. Yeah. It's like the most Caribbean <laughs> thing ever. You're just like, yes, yeah. okay, you're, you're doing it. You hit the sales that you needed to hit, you're good. You can go relax now. Um, I actually worked for her for a little bit when they had just opened. Okay. So if ever you go inside that giant menu board, that's you. I was the one that like drew it. Look at Chelsea drawing up. Yeah. I do like the menu. What's like? You know, I like to know what's on the menu. Yeah. What's going on? But then uh, the language police came in and they're like, it has to be in English and in French. So she kind of just like erased things. Um, but yeah, she she actually um, she never taught me how to make doubles mm -hmm. but she was definitely the person that helped me troubleshoot the most so like i'd go in and visit her and be like yo sharon i'm making doubles you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. the is like it's too dry it's too crispy it's too this it's too that and she's like just adjust this try this look for this okay. and oh yeah okay okay we, we don't get into the science of doubles yeah. before that i like to know where did you um did you always have a love for cooking did you always know that listen at some point i'm gonna be i'm gonna I, I seen that your face and your energy. I'm like, you knew that you were going to be a boss. You didn't know what you were going to be the boss of. <laughs> but did you always know that, hey, listen, I'm going to become a cook. I think I have a talent here. I think a lot of Trini women, um, especially come up in traditional Trini homes, everybody learns how to cook really early. Um, I've, had to, I've dated Trini girls. I love the cooking. I, um, uh, I learned about festivals and, <laughs> and yeah. doubles. Let's be honest, the best curry Trini make it. Like, you know, <laughs> let's... <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> let's be I honest. I didn't have to say it. We do have a rice debate, and I did share it with, with your mm -hmm. other cohorts. We have a rice debate. I think Haitians have the best rice. But we'll talk about that in the back end. Okay. But y'all, y'all can't touch on the doubles, man. So what goes into the doubles? Because I normally just get the one with the peas. Um, and later in life, I saw, oh, you can put a little goat in there now? A little chicken in there now? Okay, that's okay. Um, I'm a bit of a purist. Talk, okay, okay, talk to me. Um, so I always loved cooking. Right. I was that kid that uh, if it was like a Saturday afternoon or like a day off and people were 
like my parents or like we were being babysat by someone I would always sneak into the kitchen and like figure things out and be like oh let me let me try this let me do that like I was the kid that climbed the cupboards and my parents hated it what what was that first dish that you made like like give me the first Chelsea remix like it, like it's your dish nobody else has this like like are you like are you doing like a weird like cereal drop like 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 what's a Chelsea sandwich look like a Chelsea sandwich what's that thing uh it starts with a T it's a Trini thing not tambourine Tamarind sauce I like a lot. Tamarind sauce is great. Do you make yes. your own tamarind sauce? I make my own tamarind sauce. They can't touch all of that. Chelsea, you got to come no. back to the show because I, you know, I, I need samples. I, I, I need, Absolutely. I, I, happily. Um, happily. Oh, it just came to me. The pilori. Pilori, yeah. Talk to me about pilori a little bit, so, too. Uh, do you make your own pilori? I do. I started making pilori. Um, pilori was kind of like a default thing. So <laughs> at the end of... It was, like, it was like an accidental thing, I should say. So at the end of October, uh, we had a uh, pop-up at the restaurant that I work at right now. Right. So they were gracious enough to, they closed the restaurant for a day. They had a market because a bunch of the people that work there mm -hmm. do really cool things outside of, you know, Working their there. jobs. <laughs> right. So they had a market. It was like a thrifted clothing, mm. vintage clothing. It was super cool. And uh, I ran doubles. And it was amazing to see it was amazing to see that so many people showed up for doubles. Yep, there were like doubles. So, there were so many Trinidadians. Like, I thought I knew a lot of Trinidadians here in Montreal. There were so many Trinidadians that were like, hey, yo, let me get nine doubles. And you're just like, <laughs> excuse me? Okay, yes, let's go. I, I want to ask you this. What do you say? Because I have a lot of Jamaican friends, a lot mm -hmm. of Asian friends, a lot of Western friends in general. I think... Trinis are less judgmental of other Trinidadian cooking. Because I never hear Trinis say, nah, that, that ain't the one. But Jamaicans will let you know that place doesn't have the good oxtail. That place doesn't have the good rice and peas. Are, are Trinis less judgmental when it comes to judging other Trinidadian cooking? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can't understand what all the slang they be using. Maybe I can't, I'm not catching everything, so, right? Okay, so let me... You, you've asked me so many things, so I'm going to answer them. Now, do as, you, do you. I'm going to lean back. I'm going to lean back. Do you? So I started cooking when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I was always curious. The first thing I ever learned how to make was crepes. Okay. Um, that was just like, there's three things. It's egg, <laughs> flour, and milk. But yet right? I could never flip it. I got really good <laughs> no, at flipping like it. I would always add a little too much like margarine or mm, butter and yeah, it would get me. like super crispy on the oh, side. Yeah. It's the best. It's the best taste ever. Um, but in my family, so both of my parents cook, mm -hmm. but my dad is the cook. Like, yeah, I heard, yeah, I read that. I heard, I heard your dad's the man. I, I think I know him too. Tell, yeah. him, tell, him, tell him I need some pilari and some sauce. Yeah, my, my dad actually, I, my dad doesn't make pilori, but my dad makes, I think, the best curry I've ever had in my mm. life. Okay, we so, got to talk. Oh, you, oh, you got to come back. <laughs> you got to come back. So uh, I'll bring it with me I'm, next time. I'm, your curry, Sue's rice, we're going to do something. Y'all got to yeah. come back when I air this, yeah. And so in my family, so my dad's side of the family, my dad has uh, 13 siblings that are alive. Mm. And of those 13 siblings, every sibling has their own specialty. What kind of fancy family are you from? Like, is this the first family of Trinidad? No, like, we're like, we're like what is this? How does anybody have a specialty? Our, I never heard that. Our grandma, so their, their mom, my dad's mom, like, she was just, she just did it. Like, she was just so good at everything. Her hand could just, she could do no wrong with mm. her cooking. So... No measuring, no nothing. She just... It was just, you, yeah. you're feeling it. And yeah. it was so hard because when I started Sunday lunch... Um, I would like ask my dad questions. I'm like, okay, let me watch you do it. Let's let's measure it. And he'd be like, wait, what do you mean? Why? Why would, you, you can't you can't do it so man? You have to just throw. And I'm like, Daddy, no, we can't just throw. We have to know exactly what, what we're putting, you know? <laughs> it has to be the same every single time. And I think that was that's that's been my biggest uh, concern with starting uh, you know, a Trinidadian catering company, right. Caribbean catering company is that a lot of the times when you come across um, Caribbean food, what ends up happening is you lose out. You don't get consistency. Uh, you, oh, ever, oh, you, ever, oh boy, you, you opening a can of yeah, worms this but morning. You ever, you ever been to a, a Caribbean restaurant and yeah. like you're like, oh, it was good yesterday, but oh, I mean, you went back the week later yeah. and you, it wasn't the same, but yeah. it's the same. It, it should be the same. Yeah. And that's, I think, what sets us apart. Um, that's where I think the Caribbean diaspora and people who are like coming into themselves mm -hmm. as Caribbean chefs mm -hmm. and cooks, that's what we're all learning. That's the space we're stepping into because 
I personally feel that Caribbean food deserves the same respect oh, that sure. Italian food gets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it is as regional. Italian food is as regional as the Caribbean is. Mm -hmm. The Caribbean is just, we have our own independent countries. Right. But you can't tell me that... Uh, your rice example, Haitian rice is not the same as how Trinis do it, as yeah, how Jamaicans exactly. do it, as how Vinci's do it, as, as how Lucian's do it. It's completely different. It's crazy how different it is, and it's just rice. Yeah. I, can't, I can't even make rice. Oh, my but, gosh. But I gotta, I, I'm going to do a cooking show called Cooking with Jacques, and rice will be probably the first meal we'll try to make. I'm going to burn a whole bunch of rice, but it's good. We, you know, You'll you know, learn. You'll learn. <laughs> it's good. But that's how you learn. But you did bring up a good point, though, and well said, the consistency of the meals, because yeah. I, I hear that a lot, too. Like, I've gone to places, I'm not going to name them because everybody gets in their feelings, <laughs> But you've gone to places that maybe two times it hit, and then another time it don't hit. Yeah. And what happens to a lot of black people, too, in our, in our community, that one time it didn't hit, now you don't want to go back now. And, and that plays to your point. Yeah. Now, now that yeah. business lose out on that And money. I think a lot of the times um, what you'll find is that I, I've noticed in the last few years that people really associate Caribbean food with very, like, greasy and heavy food. And yeah. that's not our cuisine. Yeah. It's it's not. Well, that's why like, we had to change the narrative. It's that's very like it's it's fresh. Mm. It's bright. It's like I. It's tasty. It's tasty. There's, <laughs> there's, 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 seasoning is your friend. Yeah. Seasoning, all <laughs> seasoning is your friend, right? There's nuance. There's there's all of these things that are happening, which I think is something that I'm excited about, and like that's what I love about like Sue is that she like flipped it completely. Yeah, what oh. she does is completely vegan. Oh. Oh, oh, we're going to get the soup. I'm real excited for that ve okay. veggie Yo, patty. for real. Because people know I love food. I love mm. food. We taste, we do a lot of food. Taste on the show. I love my food. Exactly. And also, like, what I think a lot of people, the misconception is that Caribbean food is very meat heavy. But, yeah. I mean, as someone whose family is from Trinidad, because I was born here, yeah. a lot of the things we ate were vegetarian. Yeah. A yeah. lot of the things you eat are vegan by default. Like, Doubles, the doubles I make, doubles are vegan. Yeah, chickpeas, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chana, Chana. Let's call oh! it what it is. It's Chana. <laughs> well, man, I got to get you to come back because there's a big debate about that, about Chana's and chickpeas, but I love what I love whatever's in the double. And it yeah. seems so simple, right? Because it's kind of it's like a, it's like the patty of rotis. Like, it, that's like, exactly, <laughs> that, honestly, but that's, that's how I like When people are like, what's a double? And I'm like, a double is to Trinidadians what the patty is to Jamaicans. That's that's it. That's it so in a nutshell. So, so, man, I, I got it right, baby. I got it right. I'm coming. I got it right. Where, where, where do you hope to go with Sunday lunch? Because I like your energy. You seem vibrant. You seem you have you have a fresh outlook on the Caribbean food. And, and we do need more Caribbean restaurants yeah. led by young people like mm -hmm. yourself. Where do you see Sunday lunch going? And I love the name. I, I can't wait to see the logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it's right, it's right here. Sunday lunch. So the Sunday is actually my mom's handwriting. So Look at that. Because, because my... A lot of the recipes are inspired from my dad. Mm. I needed, I, I really wanted to tie my mom in in yeah. some way. And my mom, like when we were growing up, she would write us notes in our lunch boxes. Look at that. And look at that happy house. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> jealous. I, I get no note. I got a bagel and that was it. Yeah, but like <laughs> she would wrap the bagel and then like wrap the bagel in like whatever, a paper towel or a napkin, put it in the Ziploc bag and then like put a smiley face on it. And it was the best thing. And my mom, like, I love, I love her handwriting. Yeah, like, don't lunch. get me wrong. All you miss it now is that we're open. That, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's how you miss it now. So how could people follow you? How could people order? Um, I guess you do, right now you're doing catering, you're doing the ghost yeah, kitchen. Yeah, so we, what do, you, what you trying? we do a lot of, so we're doing, when I first started, mm. we were doing um, ready to eat. So yeah. people could pre-order their stuff. Yeah. Um, and that was super cool because we would deliver mm. or pick up on Sunday. So people were actually like <laughs> eating it on Sunday. I'm it was making my Sunday order lunch. today because I need some for Friday for the show. I'm going to taste it on Friday again. <laughs> and um, then this summer, uh, we ended up uh, moving into a more of a private catering space mm -mm. just because a lot of friends. What I love about Montreal and the season that we're in right now, I think COVID allowed a lot of people to dive into the things that they were really afraid of doing before. They yeah. were a little too much in their comfort zone, and mm. then everyone kind of just dove yeah. in, and yeah. we did it. So um, a homie that owns or that, uh, yeah, he owns a company called Rep Matters Ventures. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've heard of it. I think I've heard the name, yeah. So um, he had approached me earlier in the summer, and he was like, I'm doing an event for this amount of people. Mm. Send me a quote. And I, I, love, I love this story because him and I, when we first met, mm. 
we were still in our like past lives. So before opening a catering company and deciding to go to culinary school, I uh, used to be a I used to work in aviation. So I was a flight attendant. Well, look at that! Look at yeah. that! You went full three sixty on that. Yeah, us, huh? but like you know, what was crazy was that I never really wanted to be a flight attendant. It was something that I just like fell into. Okay. Um, and then I started cooking. Him and I came up at the same time. He was doing uh, athletic therapy, and now he's in VC. So like, we're like, okay, let's see, let's see what we got. And he was telling me about all these other companies that were like sending him quotes for catering. And I told him, I was like, you can pick anybody, but just know that if we do this, I'm gonna make sure this is the best event you ever have. Yeah. Because I know how important this is to you. Exactly. And I think that's that's what's beautiful about the space that we're moving into, where people are living in their passion. Mm. And like, who doesn't want to build with that? Yeah, oh look. <laughs> all, all, all I've ever wanted to do is feed people really good food okay. from really good places. Well, listen, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm hungry. I'm here. <laughs> Coming so, forward to, well, that's beautiful right there. Yeah. Chelsea, boy, Chelsea with the Sunday yeah. lunch. You can find us on Instagram. We don't have a website uh, just yet. But, but they can order. They can DM you. And, yeah, and, send us a DM on Instagram. You know what? Let me see. Let me see a picture of one of these things here. Yeah. Is there, is there a picture of the doubles in there? Oh my gosh! Yes, there's too many pictures of the doubles there. Sunday lunch. Oh, look at that! I'm gonna follow you right there, son. Thank you. Wholesome meals from, from fam, fam to, to table. table. Look at look at you have the slogan down the yeah. rack. Do the commercial right here. <laughs> Chelsea, be killing me. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank you so much. And also, much. real quick, you know, they're going to kill me. Um, give us your last take. How do you like being part of Desta's food in- incubator program? I think they're in their third cohort. Yeah. How has that helped you move along your Sunday lunch? Um, it's been incredible because we're so lucky to have the resources that we have. So Berlin, Reed, mm. he's been incredible. Shout out to Berlin. Berlin's yeah. a good dude. Up, up, up. Um, he's... Because he's had so much experience in the world of food, mm. when he speaks, he speaks from a place of full understanding. And when you tell him, this is what I'm struggling right now, with right now, mm. he understands. He understands and he, he can almost help you troubleshoot. And because we're the third cohort, we have amazing cooks and chefs and entrepreneurs now that we have. Like It's like a, a network that's mm. being built. And that's the most beautiful thing that I could have asked for because sometimes in food being a person of color being yeah. a woman of color oh, yeah. oh, in yeah. food talk about it yeah it's it's really hard because you, it comes across as it, it can very easily come across as oh well she's just the angry colored girl uh, yeah. in the kitchen <laughs> but it's it's a reality but because we have opinions we have yeah. things there's all of these things so to come across a a community of people mm. who understand exactly what you're going through yeah that helps it's it's the best thing it's I'm so fortunate and I'm so lucky that Berlin was like reached out and he was like, please apply, do this. I think you would enjoy yeah. it. I think it could benefit you. And honestly, it has benefited my myself and my business, like I would say tenfold easily. So there you go. My shout out to Berlin. Yeah. Shout out to Desta. My, y'all doing great things. Yeah. Sunday lunch, everybody. Yeah. You need your doubles, right? Yes. Dare I say some of the best doubles in the sea. I'm, I'm about to try it. I'm going to put an order in Chelsea. Yeah. I'm going to have some doubles on Friday on the show. Thank you so much for being on the morning detour. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, shout outs to my dad. Hey. <laughs>